Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's double deuce back. I took a break from the build because I got it almost done. And today's episode is going to be on the toy in a die cast motor and a transmission that I come up with that I think you guys would all like for your conversion. So stay tuned and here we go. Okay, when I. Uh, and I was working on my toy here, and uh, I got my Capo JK Max. I had this installed inside it. And um, remember, I said I was working on a transmission setup for it. So I looked at this and that, and I looked at the Revo transmission. I went back and forth because, you know, with a nitro, you need a reverse. And the transmission that is in this is so scale looking, it, it's you know, it's horrible to, to change it out. And uh, so, long story short, I remember uh, Steve from Marcy Tanks and Trucks 24-7. He had a gearbox he bought from uh, Engine uh, DIY. So this is the gearbox. It's like 80-some dollars. Now, it does not have this on it. I put the two-speed on there. Um it's a forward and reverse gearbox. It's all made out of steel. It's got full bearings in it. Um, it's, you know, it's not bad for what it is. You know, it's uh, it's relatively pretty smooth, you know. So, but, but it's all made out of, like, stainless. And it's got flange bearings in the thing, as you can see in the light there. You know what? Let me crack some lights on. Hold on. Yeah, that's a little better. <laughs> okay, get some light on the subject. But as you can see, the, the gearbox itself has got flange bearings um, front and back. It's cool because you can move these shafts to make it a full wheel drive. Um, you can put, turn this shaft around this way if you want to reverse the rotation of your project. Say your, um, this is your forward thing here pointer here because my fingers are like tree stumps so here's your forward gear over here because there's two gears this is your reverse gear because it has a counter gear on it so yeah this is geared a little lower but if you want a stronger forward gear use this one so you just switch your this comes with a oh aluminum belt style <laughs> pulley on the thing um I never really seen that. It's it's like rubber band uh, O-ring style pulleys. I never seen that in an RC hobby before. Um, but anyway, you know. It, but it's all made out of steel. No problems. You can switch from one side to the other. You can put this out both sides and have four-wheel drive. You can move it clear back to have two-wheel drive. Or you can do what uh, uh, Steve did on his transmission for his toy in uh, Mercedes truck build he put a disc brake over here on this and he used a small uh, you know basically a five millimeter shaft gear on that so it was uh, it was pretty cool you know so the way I seen it now I have a two-speed with a forward and reverse in a really small package and um, then you know, they do sell the, this here came from uh, HSP. I got this on eBay. Um, it's a, you know, it's a two-stage clutch bell for this because this was basically off a nitro car. And uh, so I'll change out the, the clutch bell that I was running there and I'll throw that on it. So now on this here, I wanted to get to my oiling system, my PCV system. You know, all I did was I made a bigger hole and I put a bigger, um, you know, nipple down here and just ran a piece of tubing right into my valve cover, right there with the two rocker arms clatter away and right across them is the camshaft lobes. And then on this side, I put another nipple right at the very bottom of the um, where the camshaft is and I ran an exit hose out here so this way here any any leftover oil 
you know, gets blown up into um, the rocker arms and uh, valve train up there, lubricates that, and then any excess comes out the hose here. And um, this here, basically, I could run this into the air cleaner and have a positive crankcase ventilation system that would just keep re-oiling itself. But um, I took the muffler off because I'm just going to run a header pipe on because these things run a lot better with a header pipe. Um, if you check out um, Steve's video from uh, Black LA Mass, he has a header pipe he put on his because we talked about how much better they run without the restriction. So, and nothing major, anything like a piece of 5 sixteenths, um, you know, steel tubing in the automotive industry will work or any kind of aluminum you can bend it and clamp it somehow or whatever so now one other thing i wanted to get to because we're going to get to this in a second so hang on guys um now i was when i was brainstorming you know looking for things now this is one of your oh i can't remember who made these things they're they're all over Amazon, eBay, and all that. They're just a one six scale die cast engine. They got Ford, Chevrolets. Uh, this is the tri power big block Corvette motor. And I was a big Chevy nut because I have a, a motor similar to this in one of my 69 Camaro convertibles that came right from the factory, except I don't have the three deuces. It's got a single carb on it. And uh, so I love engines, so I bought one of these here. And I thought about, hey, you know what? I, I measured the thing. Now, from the widest part on the side to the widest part on the side over here, without the alternator, as far as the motor manifolds go, it's a hundred and fifteen millimeters. Now the Toyin uh, V4 engine is only one hundred and thirteen point three four something like that millimeters. Um. This is actually taller than the the Toyin V4, and it's actually longer than the Toyin V4. Now, the reason I'm showing you guys this in front of that is because that already comes with a V8 in it, okay? And in my quest to build scratch builds through the years, I bought a bunch of these motors, and... Uh, as you can see on the back, I made like a transmission plate. I can take that right off, but you'll see you got a couple of holes drilled here because I got a, a brushless motor inside this thing. And I was just going to make some kind of a transmission mount to that with a spur gear. So if you have, you know, a poor man's budget like I had at the time, you know, you pop these things apart and, and you have to do some cutting with your Dremel tool. And you see the brushless motor set right inside there. There's plenty of room in there. And there are some holes and stuff that I took off of the hoses. You can drill vents in it to cool it down if you want. But I put the motor up here where the camshaft would be. That way down here would be the spur gear. So it would be more like a real engine. You put a spur gear out the back of the crankshaft and this here i'm just going to have to see i cut and sanded um wherever i went here here we go i cut and sanded the uh edges and everything and followed them down um so i can i'm gonna drill some small two, two millimeter holes and put four holes in the pan and bolt the pan on the thing but that's a pretty sick looking engine and uh the reason why I'm getting to that for this was because I measured this thing when I first um, was putting it together and you know I'm looking it's like there's no way possible that that toy in v4 is going to fit in this truck um, the FS 100 sits right down in there without a problem but this truck's pretty heavy you know the truck weighs in around 14 pounds and I mean there is a lot of room inside here but the problem is it's the shock geometry so this is uh, probably one of the only kits that i've ever bought that went right together i mean every hole was 
exactly precise. Um, I didn't have any problems with any small hardware with this thing whatsoever. And it was just amazing. And just the, the geometry and the characteristics with the weight, with the shock springs and all that, it just floats as it drives. It's, it's, if you guys had seen any videos on these things, they just like float around, you know, because the, it, it's just like a real scale car, you know, the body is like rocks around very little, but the suspension moves a lot. So, anyhow, so I ordered a V4 this morning because they were on sale and, you know, I said I wasn't going to do it, but hey, when you, you know, when you, when you're going down, you go down big. You know, so I'll figure it out down the road. And when I get it, I'll measure that for real and hold it in my hand and see where the dimensions, you know, where they are as far as width and all that. You can look at a schematic and you can get a rough figure. But it would be great to have a toy in V4 in this thing. Um, if I could pull that off, you know, it would, I'd probably surprise myself. But if not... Uh, Capo does make a 1.6 scale Suzuki Samurai. And being that toy and motor is more, that V4 is more of a 1.6 scale, you could probably drop it right in there. So, so anyway, I'm going to order another transmission housing online because they're available now. And I believe it'll set right over top of this. Now, the only thing that really holds the gears in that transmission is a bracket on the front and a bracket on the back. And that's it. The The transmission upper shell clamps over it, and the oil pan bolts to the bottom of it. It's very simple. All the gears just float there on two shafts. Um, so the way I see it is if I move this thing downward where it's inside, the transmission shell may fit right over top of this. And once it does that, I can buy the transfer case mount for the back. That where the bearings go and I could extend this shaft here it's just like I say you can buy the shaft I'll extend it out drill a hole in it for a pin and run it right into the transfer case and mount this inside that with this or possibly the v4 so but like I say it's a whole new ball game and um I want to thank everybody for like leading me down the right path when I was throwing my old capo together here because uh, first off I was told my front shocks were on upside down and uh, so when I looked I had all four of them on upside down because I had no directions whatsoever but I did find online a couple of videos that people have posted and I want to thank everybody for doing that um, on some assembly procedures out of the from the directions and uh so you know i i got it all together and mostly now i'm trying to find a video on the cage once i find a video on the cage then i'll know exactly where all my hardware goes um because actually believe it or not with the seat of my pants i had probably 95 percent of the hardware in the right places just by measuring holes and and looking at it and uh the ones i had to change were these up here because these are a hex style and uh you know they're because i had a couple of bags and envelope left over and i got tons of these little uh two by five millimeter screws left over tons of them so but that's why i say i'm gonna order another transmission case and all that online because that's what holds all these together are these here but, uh, and then, uh, Rosen from, uh, 1010 Hobbies, he emailed me because he'd seen my last video when I, when I brought him up and, uh, thanked him for, you know, everything he's done for me. Uh, I guess they had a problem with the transfer case screws were the wrong, they were too long. And I found that out too. And, uh, so he said he would send me the screws for the transfer case. So I thought that was pretty cool of him because a lot of, you know, a lot of people don't do that. Once it goes out the door, they don't they don't want to see you again unless you're buying something else. But this guy's really great at service, and I highly suggest buying there. You know, so 
Anywho, like I say, it's uh, it's coming along good. I got it rolling. I got to grease my differentials because I had forgotten in the excitement of, uh, you know, <laughs> trying to figure out the thing, put it together. And, and you know, it's like looking at a nudie book. You can't wait to get to the centerfold, you know, and that's exactly what I was doing. And um, so, but like I say, I got the dubs on it. <clears throat> These are a little strainy on the thing, but in low gear, it cranks. I mean, this thing, is like, it'll actually pull the front wheels off the ground with a brush motor in the thing. And I'm running a, I think it's a, the only motor I had laying around was a 15-turn brush motor. Um, and I didn't put the electronics in the box because I know you guys hate to see these things, and I do too. Um, because I, I have an old Traxxas uh, three-channel radio I always use to, to rough out my builds and test them out. And then... So I got another six channel uh, radio coming and um, that way I can get some options on the thing like the winch and hopefully the aromatic if I can afford that after after buying the, the toy in V4. I don't know. We'll see. Um, have to do a little hustle in here and get some things knocked down. But, um, but like I say, here's the build, guys. Any questions, comments? Uh, I mean, I love this thing in electric version. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, I, I hate to take it out and put it in here, but I want to see how it handles electric, and I want to see how it handles with nitro. And, uh, and as far as I had a comment on the hacked up bracket I made to put this here in there, well, apparently the person that that said that has never scratch built nothing before. So when you when you're scratch building stuff. It's not about spending 12 hours on a bracket you, you, to see it doesn't work. What you do is you, you hack one up real quick, you put it on there, and it works. It's, you, so the motor was setting in the truck where I wanted it for my last video, so all you guys could see that it will work. Then you can work on nice things like cleaning up brackets or making new ones and stuff like that. Um, so, you know... Steve from Black Alley Mass, he's making some really, really nice, nice, I mean, super nice brackets for his Toy and HDP 407 project. So if you get a chance, check his video out there. And, uh, you know, the, the brackets are beautiful. And he made it so it's serviceable. There's two that set in the frame rails and that screw to the frame. And then there's a, another two that screw to the motor with a spacer. So you take the screws out, you can pull the motor right out. Real, really simple uh, maintenance uh, setup and everything. So, and give him high five on that one, you know. Um, he, he does some really, really, really nice machine work. So, but anyway, like I say, any questions, comments, feel free to shoot them at me. Um, don't worry. This is going in there, so I didn't let you guys down. Um, we're going to go for it. But I just wanted to make sure I could come up with a transmission that would work. And I believe this is the this is the golden ticket right here. Um, so if you guys have a toying project and you don't have a lot of room, because I used the Revo tranny and that was pretty big and bulky. This right here with this two-speed, this two-speed setup here was like $13. The only thing you have to do is you have to make a spacer for the back, which you can buy the brass spacers, because the one-way bearing is a little bit bigger so um, once you get a, a piece of tubing i used a piece of uh, i think it was quarter inch brake tubing and i put it in a drill and sanded it down because the quarter inch brake tubing would slide right over the shaft here and so i sanded the outside of it down with 150 grit in my hand just spinning the thing till it fit inside this one-way bearing perfect and you can see now it works see it spins this way when it goes this way it stops it you know it goes to spin the shaft so and i haven't soldered it in yet but so that's my next venture i want to make sure it works so my two-speed clutch bell uh, for a few bucks more you can have yourself a really unique tranny so all right guys i'm gonna let you guys go and hope you had a great christmas i want to thank everybody out there who supported me and wish me a great you know christmas and new year's holidays and all that stuff and you guys have a safe new year's and uh I'll be getting back with you, man. Adios, everybody.